marketplace definitions. So marketplaces are complicated because they have two sides. They have buyers and sellers. And our business is to actually create the software that sits in between them and connects them. So there's always one hard side of a marketplace. And it's very good to be aware of which side of the marketplace is the harder side. So one side of the marketplace is harder to acquire and retain. It's usually sellers. Sellers are usually um, difficult to recruit. They have a lot of expectations around financial outcomes. They will switch easily if there's another place to sell their goods. There's one exception, talent marketplaces. So like job marketplaces. Employers are actually the hard side. So those are actually the buyers of the product. And so um, it makes sense because those employers spend all the money and, and they have a lot of options in terms of where to hire people. And so those are the hard side. But for pretty much all other marketplaces like Uber, Rideshare Marketplace, the drivers are the hard place, are the hard side of the marketplace. Riders are relatively easy. If you have a lot of drivers, it's easy to get riders. Um, but just because you have a lot of riders doesn't easy, mean it's easy to get someone to change their career to buy a car and become a driver. Supply versus demand constraint. Usually one of the sides of your marketplace is limiting your overall growth. If you don't have enough drivers, then the riders can't make rides and you can't generate revenue. If you don't have enough riders, then your drivers can't do rides and you can't generate revenue. So you need the two sides of the marketplace to be um, in sync with each other and scaling at a similar rate. And usually you can diagnose which side of your marketplace is constraining your growth. Gross merchandise value, this is the total spend on the consumer side of the marketplace. Um, that is not our revenue. Just because someone spent $100 on the, mar on the marketplace, we don't collect $100 because most of that revenue goes from the buyer to the seller. So the revenue that's actually ours is uh, something called a take rate. So usually marketplaces take around 10, 20 to 30% of the GMV as revenue. So if you go to Airbnb and you book a place, Airbnb might take about 20% of the total booking for themselves to run the software platform. And then the, the seller of the Airbnb takes like 80%. So our revenue is not the GMV, it's the, it's the um, percent that we actually take back to the company. Then user retention cohorts. This shows a continued activity, the continued activity of a set of customers over time. So one issue with a lot of startups is they say, okay, 30% of our revenue is recurring, but that doesn't tell you anything about the composition of their recurring revenue. You know, are these customers who bought last month for the first time or did they buy five years ago and you have really sticky customers? And so these are retention cohorts and we're gonna get into how to use these to really understand how sticky your customers are and to kind of look at them on a chart. And then customer acquisition costs, we just covered that. But the issue with marketplaces is because you have to acquire buyers and you have to acquire sellers. So there's a CAC for both parties but there's only one transaction that they share. So you need to actually look at both sides of the marketplace and create a calculation to combine the CACs based on the revenue that was generated. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a sec. And then the customer lifetime value, again, you need to actually look at this from the perspective of either the buyers or the sellers, but not both because they share the revenue. So revenue happens once, marketing happens twice. 